the savior of the world, but the world denied you. You came to redeem, but we tried to fight you. But you didn't give up, no, that's not like you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You're the savior of the world, but the world denied you. You came to redeem, but we tried to fight you. me to the book of Jonah, chapter 1, and I'll be reading from verses 1 through 17, and then I'm also going to read chapter 2, just verse 10. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, but you can read from whatever version you have. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. For their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid. And each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had lain down and gone fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? Jonah said, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. 
He said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And now chapter 2, verse 10, after Jonah has prayed in verses 1 through 9. Then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spewed Jonah out upon the dry land. So good morning again. If you will indulge me for a few moments, I would like to preach from the theme, Peekaboo, I See You. How many of you have played the game hide and go seek? Raise your hand if you've played that game. And isn't that game even more fun when you hide and don't get caught by the person counting to 10? Or when you're the person counting and you seek and you catch the person who thinks they're hiding, but you get them. Now here's the real question of the day. Have you ever tried to play hide and seek from God? Or some other person with authority in your life, you know, like maybe your parents or your teachers or maybe even a coach? Well, whether the answer is yes or no, Jonah, the star in our Bible story, and a prophet of God, which is someone who tells people what God says, does just that. He plays hide and seek from God when he avoids going to Nineveh, as God told him to do, and instead boards a boat going to Tarshish, which is going in the opposite direction of Nineveh. And in other words, is the opposite direction of where God was trying to take him. Now, if you're like Jonah, a lot of times when you don't listen to God, at first, it doesn't seem so bad, right? I mean, instead of going to a place to tell the people how wicked they are, and let's be honest, who really wants to do that? It's not going to make you more popular on the playground or in the sandbox. Probably it's not going to make you class president. It's not going to get you captain of the team. And it's definitely not going to get you likes or followers on Instagram or Snapchat. Jonah decided to pay some money and get on a boat, which is a lot more fun, right? But here's the problem. Even though Jonah had some money to pay his way going on the boat to Tarshish, because that is the opposite of what God told him to do, it created consequences and problems. And it didn't just create these problems and consequences for Jonah. It created these problems and consequences for all the people who were connected to Jonah when he got on the boat. And when we disobey God, eventually consequences and problems will come to us and sometimes to others. Has something bad ever happened to you or others around you when you disobeyed or did not listen to what you were supposed to do? For example, Maybe your teacher told you to do something you didn't want to do, and when you didn't listen, and maybe others even followed your lead, not only did you get in trouble, but others who followed you also got in trouble. Maybe your parents asked you to do something, and you thought, well, you know, they're too old. They don't really understand what it's like to be my age, even though they were once your age. And so you ignore them and you end up in a bad situation, which is probably what they told you and why they told you not to do it. And sometimes your friends or other people you know will also get into that situation with you because you weren't doing what you were supposed to do and then in them following you, they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. I won't make you raise your hand, but I bet there are many of us in here, both young children and the big kids, who have not always listened when it was in our best interest to do what God has told us to do. And just what happened when Jonah got on the boat instead of going to Nineveh? Well, that takes us to our first lesson, 
which is when you disobey God and go against God, all heck breaks loose. When Jonah got on the boat instead of going to Nineveh, all heck broke loose. The Bible says that the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, a storm came, and that storm threatened to break up the ship. And this storm was so great that it made the mariners, who are people who normally are on boats all the time, they became afraid. And they cried out, but not to the God we know, they cried out to some other little God, right? Which is something that we do sometimes. Sometimes when we get into these storms and these hard situations, we don't go to God first. We may go to our friends, we may go to ourselves, we may go to the mall, but we don't go to God. And that's where we're supposed to go. Because they didn't go to God, they didn't really know what to do. So they threw the cargo in the ship over the sea and thought that would stop the storm, but it didn't. And guess where Jonah was? Do you think he was helping them? No. Jonah went down in the ship and went to sleep. The captain was so upset, he said to him, what are you doing sleeping? Come on, get up, call your God. Perhaps your God will spare us because their God wasn't working. So not only did Jonah cause the storm because he disobeyed God, but now he was sleeping while the others were working to try to fix the storm. I mean, come on, with friends like Jonah, who needs enemies? I bet some of you have met a Jonah or two in your life. Someone who, is all <laughs> someone who is always encouraging you to disobey the rules may go something like this. You don't have to listen to Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, you know, your teacher or coach, because they don't really know what they're talking about. Maybe it sounds like this. You can skip that class. It's not going to make you fail out of school. <clears throat> Come on, everyone is trying this thing. If you take that item from the store without paying, no one will even know it's gone. And you know what happens when you listen to Jonah who is not following God? Often it's not pretty. Like Jonah, it may seem fun at first to disobey or ignore the rules. You may even feel like you are making your own rules, living on your own terms. But eventually, as in this story, Disobedience catches up with you just like it caught up with Jonah. I bet there are even a lot of big kids in this room who would tell you stories of things they did when they were little kids or when they were your age that have impacted them even into being adults. And they would tell you to go in a different direction. But guess what? Even though Jonah disobeyed God, God used both the men to remind Jonah that God was in charge, but more important, God used Jonah to show the men who God was. So that brings us to our second lesson, which is that God can use even our disobedience to remind us who is the true hashtag boss and to show others God's favor and power in our lives. The mariners didn't worship the same God that Jonah did. But they understood when the storm came to fear him, and that's why they asked Jonah to pray. God used the mariners, on the other hand, to remind Jonah of God's power and omnipresence, which is why they told Jonah to pray to God. But at the same time, Jonah was showing the mariners who God was. In other words, God was both reminding Jonah of his bossness, but God was also using Jonah to show the mariners who at the time didn't believe in God of God's power, of God's presence, and of God's anointing favor on Jonah's life. When the mariners cast the lots and realized that it was Jonah who caused the storm, Jonah told the mariners to throw him over the boat. And this is important because the lesson here is that God is always present in our lives. Even though you think you can play hide and seek from others, you can never play hide and seek from God or God's presence. God is always with us. He is with us when we are doing God's work and when we are disobeying God's will. The beauty in this Jonah story is that it teaches us that God will show up and show out even in the presence of those who don't believe in or know God and that God can still use you because God is just so great 
to show other God's power. Even when you are going in the wrong direction of God's plan for your life. Later on in the Bible story, Jonah does eventually go to Nineveh. He does preach to the people of Nineveh, and their hearts also turn to God. So this part of the story is showing us an example of how God can transform others. God's plan is bigger for us than dis our disobedience or our mistakes. And in the midst of our disobedience, God can still use us to introduce God's grace and mercy to others just because we met them. So never underestimate how God can use you to influence others to be more like God. So some of you may have social media. You, you may be on Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat or some others. And just like you can post pictures of what's going on in your life, you can post praise and testimonies of God. You can pro praise and post scriptures. And you can praise and post about the things that God is doing in your life. And you don't know how that might influence someone else to want to know the same God you know. So don't underestimate just because you're young that you don't have God's power to introduce people to God because it can come at any age. I know that some of you may have learned to drive or are learning to drive right now. And you know that sometimes, even with GPS, you may make a wrong turn, or you may get off on the wrong exit or go down the wrong road. And just like Jonah, when you go in the wrong direction, you have to change direction and turn around so that you can get back on the right road or path. And Jonah did that. When after the mariners cast the lot and saw that it was Jonah who caused the storm, Jonah told them to just throw him over the boat. And when they did and the storm stopped, the mariners worshipped God. So just think about it. When Jonah decided to get off the boat because he knew he wasn't supposed to be there, the storm stopped immediately. And because God had used Jonah to show God's presence, that let the mariners start worshipping God. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> So again, although Jonah initially disobeyed God's directions and consequences came, even in his disobedience, God still found a way to use Jonah to help bring people to God. And God can do that in your life too. Just remember that God will always make a way for you to turn your life around and get you back on track, whether you're a young child, a teenager, or a big kid. God can always turn your life around. And God can help you as he turns your life around to help you influence others and bring others to come closer to God too. Once Jonah was thrown over the boat, he didn't go to Nineveh right away. Can anyone guess why? Does anybody have an idea about why God didn't just send Jonah right to Nineveh after he was thrown into the ocean? Well... I can't say for sure, but I suspect it could be for two reasons. One might be because jo God wanted Jonah to be really sure he was prepared to do what God had originally asked him to do. We are very blessed to serve a God who grants us great grace and favor, but often we take that grace for granted. And sometimes God has to put us in a holding place to get our minds right, so that when we do what God has asked us to do, we do it exactly the way God wanted us to do it and not continue to disobey or rebel against God or kind of throw our own ideas in there somewhere. Here, if God had let Jonah get off the boat and not get thrown into the ocean but just go right to Nineveh, maybe Jonah would have run away from Nineveh again. The second reason could be because God is reminding us that when we disobey and mess up, God's grace can catch us in our greatest mistake, and just like Christ died for us and took over for our sin and swallowed our sins, just like the fish swallowed Jonah. And that brings us to our third lesson, which is sometimes when we disobey God, he has to fish us and net us before he can release us to make sure we are ready to follow. An example. This is kind of what God had to do with Jonah. Here's the fish, and here's Jonah. He caught him and he ate him. <laughs> but even in that moment, 
When Jonah went over the boat, God did not kill Jonah or let him die in the water. Instead, God got Jonah's attention by letting a fish catch him. When Jonah ran from God, God used the fish to swallow Jonah. And during this time, Jonah stayed in the whale for three days and three nights. And in chapter 2, that really talks about when Jonah is actually in the belly of the fish. And I encourage you to read it because in that time, Jonah prays and does a lot of, he spends a lot of time alone and he does a lot of praying. And during that time, Jonah told God that he was finally ready to listen and that he would go to Nineveh and let the people know that they needed to change their ways and follow God. In our own lives, sometimes God will remove things and people that are distracting us from following God's will. And maybe that's happened to you. And this happens whether you're a young child or a big kid. Maybe some of you have lost a few friends along the way. And at the time, you didn't understand why your best friend no longer wanted to hang out with you or why you, started getting, why you stopped getting invited to certain activities. But it just might be that God isolated you to insulate you, just like he did with Jonah. The Bible says that God is a jealous God. This doesn't mean that God is jealous of us, because after all, God is everything and God has everything. But it means that God wants to be first in your lives. So God wants to be bigger. As much as you might love sports, God wants to be bigger than sports, than your singing, than your friends, your family, than getting good grades in school. God wants to put you, God wants you to put God above everything in your life. God cannot and will not compete with anyone or anything. And Jonah teaches us that when we run and hide from God and we try to go to other things, God will always say, peekaboo, I see you. I see you when you are doing right and I see you when you are doing wrong. And while I love you either way, When you disobey me, sometimes I will have to fish you out from the crowd to bring you back to me. When I was 13, I preached my first sermon right here at GFCC for Youth Day. I did so with my older sister, Nicola, who volunteered us. And (laughs) that's, she's not here to defend herself. That same year in Sunday school, I remember Deacon Carol Labonte reading us a story about a man who said that God called him to preach at 13. He was reflecting back as an adult. When God told him this, like Jonah, he told God, no thank you, and that he wasn't going to be a minister, he was going to be a lawyer. And just like Jonah, he tried to disobey God and, became, and become a lawyer. But God didn't call him to become a lawyer. He called him to become a minister. And at the time I heard that story, I didn't know how much impact it would have on my own life later on. I wish I could tell you the name of that man, but I can't. I don't even remember. And maybe that's not the point of me telling that part of the story. But what I can tell you is that while God did not call me directly to be a minister at 13, he showed me through preaching that sermon a glimpse of what he had in store for me. And while I was in law school to become a lawyer, God called me to be a minister. Today, I am able to be both a lawyer and a minister. And like Jonah, amen, amen. (laughs) And like Jonah, I didn't follow God's call right away. And that came with a few fish moments of my own until I did obey God. But thanks be to God that even though I spent some days in the belly of a fish, and even though you may spend some days and nights in the belly of a fish, know that whatever God has called you to be, whether a prophet like Jonah, a preacher like Martin Luther King Jr., like Reverend Dr. J. Anthony Lloyd, like Reverend Lackard, like Minister Belinda Mpakazehe, like Reverend Kais, maybe a professor like Charles Ogletree, maybe a mayor like Dr. Yvonne Spicer, or maybe even a president like Barack Obama or a civil rights leader like Dorothy Height. You don't have to be afraid to follow God. You can run, but you cannot hide from God. When God speaks over your life and you obey, all things will be in order, even if they're difficult. In our last lesson, I just want to remind you to not be a bitter believer. 
Favor ain't fair and grace ain't a race. In Jonah 2.10, the word says that the, then the Lord spoke to the fish and it spewed Jonah out upon the dry land. So after all the praying and all of the time alone, God finally releases Jonah. And the underlying lesson of the Jonah story teaches us about God's anointing favor and God's sustaining grace. God had anointed Jonah with favor, and that was the favor to preach and teach the blessing of following God to the people of Nineveh. That may not have looked like favor to Jonah at the time because it wasn't appealing to him. But as Jonah went on his journey, he did come to see God's power to transform lives and that God's grace didn't just extend to him. It extended to all who were open to receive it. And without spending too much time in the text, if you go on to chapters 3 and 4 of Jonah, and I do encourage you to do that, when Jonah finally goes to Nineveh and he preaches what God told him to preach, the people are so humbled that they turn to God. They fast, and the people and even the animals were covered in sackcloths. So you would think Jonah would be so excited and happy. He finally did what God told him to do, and it worked. Wrong! <laughs> Unfortunately, Jonah was not as excited as God that the people of Nineveh's hearts were turned to God. After everything he went through to get there, that doesn't make sense. He knew that God would be gracious, and he seemed to think his coming to Nineveh was pointless, but it wasn't. God's favor and anointing, again, does not just extend to us when we need it. It extends to all. It's free for all who wish to receive it. So don't think that you failed at fulfilling God's purpose if something doesn't turn out the way you think it should. Because favor ain't fair, and grace ain't a race. We're not in a race to get God's grace. God's grace can be given to all. So you may look at someone and you say, well, I've been doing right all my life and they didn't, but now look at where they are and look at where I am. You know what? You don't know where God is going to take you in your life. So don't worry about what God is doing in other people's lives. In fact, continue to pour into people. You never know how God will use that person, just like God used the unbelieving mariners to bless Jonah and use Jonah to bless them. You don't know how God is going to use other people. So don't look at anybody's path. Just follow your own. You are not competing for God's love. You're not competing for God's favor, his anointing, or his grace. God's grace is sustaining. It's life-giving, and it will carry you and everyone God grants it to through this life. Obeying God is not a contest, and obeying God does not make you better than others. Amen. We should obey because it is what God calls us to do. Remember that when you obey God and you may see others disobeying God, they need the same favor, the same prayers, and the same grace that sustains you. So instead of gossiping about them, instead of bullying them or judging them, may I ask you to get on your knees and pray for them. Amen. Amen. Remember that every saint is a sinner saved by grace and every sinner is a saint waiting to be fished out of their wicked ways. Wow. Like, Jonah put God, like God put Jonah in a fish, then the fish spewed Jonah out, and Jonah fished for the people of Nineveh and helped convert them to have a heart for God. We are all in search of God's anointing favor, and we will continue to do God's work because of God's sustaining grace. Just as God had an assignment for Jonah, God has an assignment and a purpose for you, no matter how young you are. No matter how far you run, you can't hide from God's sight. And remember that God will always find you. Say peekaboo, I see you, and pull you away from sin into his sustained grace. As I close, I just want to give one last prayer and say, Lord, I thank you for loving us unconditionally. Although we struggle to do what you ask us to do, help us to remember to follow in your direction, even when we don't know the purpose. Remind us of opportunities to introduce others to you, no matter how young or old we may be, and help us give the same favor and grace to others that you so freely give to us. Thank you. Amen. 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 So at this time, let us be blessed with the uh, anointed dance ministry as they, they worship God through dance. Good morning, church.
Today, I will be reading Acts 21, verses 13 and 14. Then Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am not ready to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. When he would not be dissuaded, he gave up and said, The Lord's will will be done. Be blessed by thy will by Hilary Scott, choreographed by Kayla Joseph. I'm so confused. I know I heard you loud and clear, so I followed through. Somehow I ended up here. I don't want to think, I may never understand, that my broken heart is a part of your plan. When I try to pray, all I got is her in these four words. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. I know you're good. first say this morning to you, Gail, how blessed and encouraged I have been as I have seen you push through, how you have come to church each week, how you have relied on God's grace in your life in the midst of such pain and such sorrow. You are a reminder to all of us that 
in our time of grief, God promises to be with us. And I know it's not easy. But you are a tower of strength, and we are so thankful for that. Camille, a daughter of GFCC. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Preacher, lawyer, attorney. Now you're working, with, working for the government. Amen. But we are so proud of you. I want you to know, ever mindful of the journey as you shared in your sermon today of what that journey has been. But you are an example of what it means to be obedient, even as you preach today. That wherever God leads you, how God's path is there, whatever the ups and downs and the struggles that we know about them all, you know God has been right there for you. And we have been blessed today to have you come and preach and remind us that God is still on the throne, God is still guiding, and God is still touching and using you. We want to pray for you today, because you're down there in Washington, D.C., where a whole lot of crazy folk down there. <laughs> but in the midst of all that, you have an example of what it means to be salt and light. And we believe God for that. It's a little presentation here. you wear and, um, and very special in that if you will notice from the very bottom of it, this is made from the tie of Deacon Glover. Maybe wear it. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and bless you for Camille Glover. She's a child of yours, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that she loves you, that she is a daughter of GFCC. It's Camille Glover we're talking about. Yes, Lord, the daughter of Gail and the late Deacon Ron Glover. Sister Corinne and Nicola. We thank you, Lord, how your hand has been on her life you have guided her, and you, Lord, are using her to your glory. We pray, Lord, that as she wears this stole, it will be a reminder of the Father, you, Lord, of her life, a reminder of her dad, who's in glory with you, Lord, that each day as she stands, she might proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We love her, Lord. We're proud of her. And Lord, we sent her forth that she, yes, might be obedient unto you for all that you call her to do. For we pray it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Amen.